What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Talking Horror Special Episode 5. I am currently joined by Michael Myers Reacts once again, and today we're going to be talking about the brand new Halloween Kills trailer that was released on the 24th of June. I know that this video is pretty late considering the trailer dropped a few weeks ago, but better late than never, and uh, we are super excited to dive deep into this discussion because there is a lot to talk about and a lot to unfold. So to kick things off, Michael Myers Reacts, what did you think about this trailer, bro? Um, overall, I think the trailer was good. Um, I'm not as hyped uh, for this movie as I was for Halloween 2018. Obviously, when Halloween 2018 came out, when we got the trailer, I was more excited because we haven't seen Michael at that point in what was it, like nine years, something like that. Yeah. Um, I think this trailer was good. I think it was put together well. I know people have been complaining that it's shown too much. Um, I don't really agree with that just due to the fact that, you know, the characters that we see die in this trailer are literally nobodies. They're just there for the body count. Now, I get that they could have saved certain kills for the movie, but you guys got to remember, uh, well, rumor has it at least that there's supposed to be like at least 30 kills in this movie, maybe more. So they probably just sh showed us barely anything. I mean, we're probably going to get like way better kills when we actually see the movie. So I'm not too mad that they showed certain kills. I mean, the light, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you've seen the trailer, the kill with the LED light bar going through that chick's neck. I mean, that was amazing. Um, the Saul kill with the firefighter in the beginning of the trailer. Yes. All that stuff is awesome. Um, but I think the reason they've shown us that is because they have way better kills in store for us when we actually go see the movie. That's right. And I, I love how you mentioned the, uh, the light tube kill because to me, that was the best part about the trailer. Again, mm. like I understand why they're showing certain kills in the movie or not in the movie, in the trailer, excuse me. But um in a way, like when they actually approach it, I feel like maybe they could have just cut the camera. You know what I mean? Like, for example, the shot where Michael stabs the lady with the light tube. Mm -hmm. um, I think they should have just Michael should have just approached her and just have the trailer cut to black with just her screaming. And I would have been perfectly fine with that. But yeah. I get I get that there's going to be a huge kill count in this movie, but I just really wish they saved they would have saved this particular one just because it's so different. You know, like we, we've never seen Michael use a light tube and stab someone so fluidly and precisely, you know, it was really interesting to see. Yeah, it definitely is a unique kill for Myers. And I, and I agree to some extent, like they definitely, you know, could have saved that for when we actually saw the movie in theaters. Um, but again, like, since it's not a big character, I mean, it don't bother me as much. I could see where, where people could complain about that. And I said this on a live stream I did on my channel. They could have cut the trailer down a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's like two minutes and a half, maybe something around that. Um, just like every trailer is nowadays. They could have cut it down. So I do like your idea of them. Instead of showing the kill, you know, cuts the black and you hear her screaming. Maybe you even see Michael break the light bar or whatever you want to call it and then right. cut the black and show her screaming. That would have been really cool. Or they could even just insert like, you know, like his uh, breathing in the movie too. Yeah. Trailer. Yeah. That would have been really cool. Yeah. But yeah, um, I thought, you know, what another thing I really liked about the trailer was the fact that they're actually acknowledging Michael's supernatural abilities. A lot of people will tell you that he was meant to be part mortal in the original movie, but that just isn't true because, you know, he could lift up a grown man with one arm, stab him against, you know, like a wall. And by the end of the movie, he's been stabbed multiple times, shot six times off a balcony. Yeah. yeah, he just gets up and strolls away, you know? And I, I love the line where Lori says, the more he kills, the more he transcends. It's yeah. just super badass. Yeah, it's a great line. And, and it reminds me of, like, something that Loomis would say if Loomis was in this movie, of course. It's almost like Lori is becoming our new Dr. Loomis, and Allison is becoming our new Lori. I've been saying that for a long time, ever since 18 came out, and I really think that's true. I mean, they're giving him – I mean, they're giving her lines – um that Loomis would say like I could definitely see Loomis saying that yeah and also uh when I found out that Allison was going to become the new Lori essentially it was in the the uh, opening credits actually of 2018 because it said introducing Andy Matichak as Allison so that's how yeah. I knew. yeah yeah she's definitely taken on the new Lori Strode if you will even though she's not Lori Strode of course but it's like like Dave McRae says um it's like you know the passing of the torch mm-hmm 
And what do you think Lori's role is going to be in this movie? Do you think she's going to spend a majority of the movie in the hospital to kind of keep it realistic? I, I think she's going to be in the hospital for most of the movie. I think she's yeah. going to kind of take a backseat, sort of. I mean, I don't think her role is going to be as big in this one as it was in 18. I'm not saying she's going to be, you know, have a small part in this movie. I just think she's going to be kind of more of this background character. You know, she's going to spend time in the hospital healing. I think that's where she's going to see Sheriff Brackett because most likely he's probably a security guard at the hospital. Mm. Um, obviously, they're going to talk, whatever happens with them. I think she'll be there most of the time because I feel like Halloween Kills is mostly going to focus on the mob stuff and Allison and them wanting to get revenge on Michael. So I think she's sort of going to take the back seat, not fully. I mean, she's still going to be one of the main focuses, of course. Right. And like what you said, they're definitely going to be focusing on the new characters and also the the old characters that are being reintroduced, you know, like yeah. uh, Tommy and Lindsay and all that. So I mm -hmm. definitely agree with you. I think Lori's definitely going to take a back seat in this movie. Yeah, for sure. And another thing too, I know people have been asking this on not so much my stream. I've just seen it on social media and stuff talking about, you know, why is people riding at the hospital, you know, like shaking the ambulance, breaking the hospital windows. I have a theory that isn't, it's not, it's a theory. Okay. So, okay. um, I don't think, I don't know if they're so much mad that Michael is doing what he's doing. I mean, of course they're not cool with it. I mean, he's killing people in Haddonfield, but there's obviously people think in 2018, either Sartain, if I can speak, hold on. If Dr. Some people think Dr. Sartain made the bus crash so Michael could, could escape. Some people also think that, you know, maybe Lori did it because she wants to kill him, obviously. Right. And I think that might possibly get answered in kills. Maybe not. But if it does get answered, maybe if it is Lori who you will pretty much help Michael escape, if you will. Maybe they're writing against her as well, because if she did have any role in helping Michael escape, then she also got a lot of people killed. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, is that something you would like to see in particular, if they actually revealed that, or would you rather them keep that under the low? Um, I mean, if it's a big, if it's a big deal for this trilogy, because you remember this is the second part in the trilogy, if right. it's something that's going to play out throughout these last two movies, then yeah, I would be cool with them revealing it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And also, um, I really love how this in this trailer, you could kind of just see Michael just wander around and wreak havoc on the townspeople. It's kind of like a natural escalation of the entire town and not just Lori being done with Michael's shit, but it's kind of just like the thing we quietly hope to see in a lot of slasher flicks, uh, the townspeople just finally getting revenge and the innocent bystanders finally fighting back. Yeah, for sure. And the closest thing that we've had to this in the Halloween franchise is Halloween 4 with Earl and the guys from the bar being the so-called mob. Right. I mean, what do you think of this being, you know, a whole movie about that? Do you think that's going to work out or do you think it's just going to be, you know, something that should have just been minor? I don't think it would have worked if they didn't bring back Tommy and Lindsay because they had a pretty important role in the original and they're yeah. finally just gathering everybody together. So it's going to be a much bigger scale compared to Halloween 4. Halloween mm -hmm. 4, it did work. But it, again, it was on a much smaller scale. Yeah, and it's it also was. a great excuse to have Michael rack up like a massive body count. So I think it's definitely going to work for this movie. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I want to see how it plays out. I want to see how it starts. Because I really do feel like obviously we all know that Michael's going to escape the burning house. We see that in the trailer. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious on how the mob is actually going to start. You know what I mean? Like in the very beginning of the movie, I wonder how this is all going to begin with the mob stuff. My theory on how the mob stuff is, mob stuff is actually going to begin is that they are just so angry at um, sher the sheriff because mm -hmm. he didn't take the situation with Meyer seriously. Uh, sheriff Hawking oh. was trying to remind him. So... I, I feel like they're just going to go right after him. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I can see that. I could definitely see that. That would make sense. I mean, you know, the sheriff should have definitely took something like that serious, especially since, you know, he escaped. Like, you, they know what he's capable of. That's something that he definitely should have took serious. So I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, definitely. And what did you think about the whole firefighter sequence in the beginning? Uh, I think it's really cool. Um, I know that bothered some people, you know, them showing that. I think it's fine. Um, it, it, it looks really cool. I like like the POV shot, the firefighter and stuff. We yes. never got that in um, Halloween ever. 
So that's really cool. And I, I mean, it, it looks, it looks really cool. I mean, the slow motion shot with Michael coming in the house with the fire behind him. I'm not sure if we're going to see that in the actual movie, I hope but so. the whole, I think that whole scene is going to be epic. I think it's going to be a really epic opening for a Halloween film. Yeah, honestly, I'm very excited to see how it plays out. Um, mm. My guess is that Myers will escape by climbing through like a gaping hole on top where in the trailer, you can see the firefighters actually falling through. Yeah. And then somehow, I don't know how, they might not even show it, but eventually he's going to make his way upstairs and then out the front door. And again, they might not even explain it. They just might leave it up to the viewer's interpretation. Yeah, I seen a, well, I heard a theory over on Wham's channel. We watched a movie. I'm sure most of you guys know who it is or what that channel is. Um, but you know that uh, like rack area where uh, Lori had the guns? Yes, there was a theory from them saying that they think Michael was hiding in there. And then by the time the firefighter fell through the floor, you know, he's going to come out, kill that firefighter and, you know, maybe do what you said. Not sure. But, you know, obviously that's how it's going to start. And I think that's a good idea. Him coming out of that like gun rack closet thing. That would be really cool. That, that actually makes. Yeah, that makes some sense. Yeah, I can yeah. see that happening. For sure. And uh, yeah, I also love the cameo of the bloody Halloween three season of the witch masks and i'm actually yeah. curious to see who the victims are in, under the masks yeah for sure i i know um there's theories going around about that which i'm not going to say on here because of spoilers um there's theories going around on who those people might be again i'm not going to say it um but if it is what people say then let's just say it's going to be pretty big definitely and uh, we also got a first look at Anthony Michael Hall as Tommy Doyle and Kyle Richards as Liz Lindsay Wallace in this trailer. Um, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the callback when Meyer slams his hand through the side window of the car and it cracks while she's inside, just like the opening of the, uh, well, not the opening, but, you know, in the beginning of the original film. Yeah. Really like that a lot. Yeah, for sure. I think we're going to get callbacks in this one as well. Uh, maybe not as much as 18, but we're definitely going to get them, obviously, with the H3 mask, as you said, with the... Uh, hand on the window we're going to get more callbacks i do like that stuff i think they should do that throughout this whole trilogy even with halloween ends maybe not overdo it but definitely give the fans a nod here and there you know yeah definitely um do you have a particular favorite shot in this movie All right. um saying movie i'm sorry <laughs> trailer <laughs> um my favorite shot in the trailer probably it's the shot right it's kind of hard to explain it's that shot where it's got Michael where he's like turning a little bit and you got the house on fire in the background. It's like right the, at the end of the um, firefighter, like small little massacre we see, we see right. it's like right at the end of that. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's probably my favorite shot. Some of you may want to the, the Halligan bar. No, no, it's, it's way after that. It's like right after he kills them and he, he does like a slow turn and you can oh, see like, I know what you're talking. It's like really quick. It's yeah. a really quick shot. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, love I love that, that. shot. And I also love when he just slowly just walks out of the house with the Halligan bar. And then yeah. you just see one of the firefighters reactions to him. Just yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I, I love, love it. that. That was awesome. Yeah, dude, for sure. Also, I like too when, when we do see the LED light bar kill or whatever, when he does yeah. that head turn for just a quick second, that was really nice too. Yeah, the, the mask looks awesome in this movie. I was kind mm -hmm. of worried initially that, you know, they were going to kind of pull Rob Zombie, give him like that ripped, torn look in the mask. I'm really glad they didn't take that route. They just kind of have half the mask kind of burned. I really love that. Yeah, for sure. I think I think they did really well with the mask. I was afraid at first when people were like, oh, obviously the mask is going to be burnt. I was thinking the same thing, like a lot of the mask was going to be gone mm -hmm. or it just wasn't even going to look like a mask anymore. They definitely didn't do that. You could see burns on it, but they didn't overdo it. And it definitely works. Right. Do you think maybe in Halloween ends he's gonna obtain a new mask or he's gonna just have the same one probably? Um, I'm not sure. I want to say he'll probably have the same one because there's people who say that all three of these movies are gonna take place on the same night to maybe the next morning. Wow. Um, but if ends does, because obviously kills is the same night as eighteen. Yes. Um, but th that's just what I heard. It's it's not confirmed. That's just what I heard. But if if ends is like maybe a time gap, then they'll probably have another mask. But if it is on the same night as 18 and kills, then it's probably going to be the same. It's a really big Halloween night. <laughs> For sure, man. That'd be like the longest one in history. Weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we also got to see Lonnie in this trailer, who is Cameron's father, of course. Um, And yeah, Lonnie, I wouldn't say he had a 
pivotal role, but, you know, he had a pretty important one, I'd say, because he was the one that spread the word about the boogeyman, and he tried to scare Tommy and all that stuff, and he was actually one of the few that actually encountered Myers when he bumped into him. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him return, and I'm also looking forward to seeing the 78 flashback sequences with him, and I'm really glad that they didn't spoil the flashback scenes in this trailer. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm glad they didn't show anything from the flashbacks because I think that's going to be a big part of this movie, seeing like what they do with these flashbacks. Like, We don't know how many there's going to be. We don't know what's going to happen in these flashbacks. We all know that obviously Lonnie is involved with one because of like uh, the behind-the-scenes photos that we've already seen months ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad they didn't show that either. They didn't need to. I mean, that's probably not – I mean, I don't know how big of a – you know what it's going to do to the plot of the story showing these flashbacks so i don't know if it has a major thing over the plot or if it's just something little but i'm glad they didn't show it either yeah i'm i'm glad that we're getting these flashback scenes because i understand that this is a direct sequel to the original film and they're retconning the rest of the sequels but i just want to really buy into the fact that this movie takes place 40 years later because i am a huge fan of halloween 2 and mm-hmm. to me, in my opinion, in my honest opinion, that is the true definitive sequel. Yeah. And I just really want to see a connection to both of the films. And I would also really like to see both Sheriff Hawkins and Brackett involved in the flashbacks in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool, too. Like, like you said, Halloween 2 is always my sequel, uh, 1981, of course. Um, it was hard for me to except that Halloween 2018 was a sequel to the original because it didn't feel like it was a sequel to it, to me at least. Um, Halloween 2 is definitely the perfect sequel. I mean, when I watch Halloween 1, I watch Halloween 2. You could look at those as one big movie. But if you watch 78 and 18 back to back, it doesn't have that feel that the first and second one did. Exactly. Um, so personally, I just don't – Halloween 2018 is not my sequel to the original, and it never will be. So I see where you're coming from. I also would like to see – uh you know, a flashback scene with Brackett and all that stuff. I can't wait to see what Brackett does in this role. I don't know if he's a security guard or what, but I'm excited to see what they do with him in the flashbacks or just as, you know, present time. Yeah. And one thing, now that I'm actually thinking about it, um, I'm not sure if Brackett is going to be in the flashbacks because they would have to uh, use CGI. Yeah, like de-age him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. They may not do that. Hawkins, they can do. They could just recast someone yeah. else to play him. Yeah, for sure. Another thing, too, I was going to say, is kind of a idea I had. I, I talked about this on my live stream, and I wanted to throw it on here on the podcast. Um, at the You know the shot in the trailer when Cameron has the gun, and he tilts it, and the blood's coming down and all that stuff? Yes. Um, imagine if Cameron looks up to see Lonnie's dead body. Imagine if that's Lonnie's death scene right there. That is very plausible. I could definitely yeah. see it happening for sure. It would that's be really cool. Theory. Yeah, I would love that. I think that's a perfect way for Lonnie to go out, letting his son find him, I don't know, hang from whatever. That would just be so cool. Mm-hmm. And I also have a feeling that the Myers house is definitely going to make an appearance in this movie because yeah. I remember seeing a behind the scenes. It wasn't like a featurette or anything. I think it was just like a behind the scenes photo of the Myers house but it wasn't like filmed on location. It was filmed in like one of those like warehouses. So yeah. only you could only see like the front half of the house. Um, but I definitely think it's going to be in this movie. I think Myers is going to return to the house and they're going to have like a showdown with Allison and maybe Drew, uh, Judy Greer's character as well, uh, Karen. Yeah. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, I think we're going to see the Myers house too, especially that scene in the trailer when Lonnie, Cameron, and Allison are in that vehicle and he has a map that pretty much leads everything back to the Myers house that's pretty much what he's referencing referencing to so yeah I think we're gonna see the Myers house in this I don't know if we'll see it like a good bit or just at the ending of this movie but either way I do think we are gonna see it yeah definitely and uh also another kind of funny thing that I just thought of it's just the the fact that Myers kills more victims single-handedly in this trailer than he does in the the original film combined (laughs) that that's actually pretty funny (laughs) yeah So overall, there is so much to unpack in this trailer. I think we really touched on a lot of key things. Uh, I really feel like David Gordon Green is going all out for this sequel. Uh, I love the new score rendition and the POV shot with the firefighter. Um, By the way, what did you think about that new score rendition of the Halloween theme? Um, 
at first, believe it or not, when I first heard it, I was kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I wasn't crazy too- about it, mm-hmm. but it, it's grown on me. I, I like it. I mean, we don't hear a whole bunch of it, um, which we will obviously when the movie comes out and when the uh, soundtrack comes out, all that stuff. But it has grown on me. I listened to it a few times after that. And I was like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. But my first impression of it was just kind of, eh, like I wasn't crazy about it. Yeah, it was the same deal for me. I think I watched the trailer two other times after I watched it the first mm-hmm. time. And uh, I, it kind of, it's grown on me. I'm not going to lie. But I don't think that that's going to be the main theme. That might just be a little, little hint or a little cue later on. I don't think that's going to be the main theme for like the intro yeah i don't think so either um but yeah it, it, it's grown on me um I, I mean i don't expect the soundtrack to be bad to kills because carpenter's doing it of course he's also doing ends mm-hmm. i believe at least um so i i don't expect it to be bad at first i was disappointed because i was like don't tell me that you know this this isn't going to be as epic as 18 because 18 score was just amazing yeah um I, I was kind of afraid that it wasn't going to be as good as that, but I think it's going to be good. It just took me a second to realize that, you know, it's actually not that bad. For sure, man. Um, and also, by the way, another thing I'd like to mention, do you think Nick Castle, I know he's definitely going to make an appearance in this movie, but do you think they should give him the chance to be in more scenes and more up close and personal scenes? Um, I would say so. I know he cameoed in 18 and he's supposed to cameo in this one. Yeah. I think I think they should give him a little more. I mean, he doesn't have to do anything crazy. If it's yeah. just, you know, little shots here and there, you know, let the man do it. I think that would be really cool. Um, I, I guess we should just be thankful that at least we're getting cameos with him. I mean, he could just say no and not do anything. So sure. it's kind of cool that he at least cares about the character enough to do at least a cameo. Mm-hmm. I know he had one cameo in the 2018 film by the scene with the, the window. The mirror. Yeah, like the mirror. Yeah. Shot. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I'm just hoping to see him more in up close and personal shots. Cause why not? You know? Yeah. I would love to see that. I would love for him to get more involved with the character again. I mean, of course he can't do anything crazy, but that's why James is there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, like you mentioned earlier on, uh, the eye level view from the, uh, firefighters perspective, that was really unique. And I don't think I've ever, ever seen anything like that, uh, with this series at least. Yeah, it's never happened in Halloween, so I respect it, you know, already for doing something different uh, for the Halloween franchise. I think that's, I don't know, do you think that's the only time we'll see it just with the firefighter? Do you think they'll use it again maybe later on with another character? I think, yeah, I think um, they they could definitely do something like that again. I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah they probably will. I, I'm down with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in like the 2018 film, there were like a lot of unique tracking shots. Yeah. And, and stuff like that over the shoulder. Well, over the shoulder shots, typical kind of camera mm. angle. But, you know, they had a lot of unique shots is what I'm trying to say. So hopefully, I'm sure. yeah, hopefully but, they do something like that in Halloween ends as well. Give us something unique. It's, it's kind of like a trend now. Like they did that with 18 a little bit. Now they're doing it with kills. Maybe they'll do something in Halloween ends that we never seen before for this franchise. Yeah, for sure. And also um, for the opening credits, do you think they're going to go with the jack-o'-lantern again or maybe a burning jack-o'-lantern? What's your prediction? Uh, a burning jack-o'-lantern would make sense. Um, I could see them doing I think it will be. I feel like they're going to stick with that throughout this whole trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a burning one would definitely make sense. So I kind of hope they do that. I like that idea. I know the guys over at uh, Coleman Films, I think, did it with the Inferno trilogy they did, mm-hmm. with one of them at least. So I think that's a good idea. They may not, but I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it's cool to maybe stick with a different theme, you know, for the Jack o' Lantern. Because I really yeah. loved how they, uh, in the uh, twenty eighteen film, they had the uh, the pumpkin just rotting in reverse. I thought I thought that was yeah, wrong. yeah. They should definitely do something that you know really explains what you're getting into. I mean, burning pumpkin would make sense. Um, who knows what they're going to do with ends? But a burning pumpkin would definitely fit it. For sure, man. So I think that's going to be a a wrap on the discussion. What do you think? Yeah, sure. All right, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe to both of our channels. Link will be in the description below to Michael Myers Reacts channel as always. And we will catch you on the next episode.